Right now, I would like to invite next speaker, Dmitry Popov, CRT Group. Dmitry, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. My name is Dmitry Popov. I represent a CRT group. It's a center of speech technologies. We are involved in speech related technologies, or we have a speech on the output, like speech synthesis, or the speech on the input, which is the speech recognition, voice biometrics, etc. Right now, I'm going to tell you about technologies related to speech analytics, first of all. And my story will be dedicated to how we've been living the phone channel. In the beginning, in the year 2012, the company made the recognition of the continuous speech, and we had speech analytics. Uh, technology to the speech center. The speech is recognized in a telephone channel because it has less noises and there are no voice overlays. And about by 2017, CRT made the decision that we are uh, ready to leave this niche into bank departments, uh, pharmacies, uh, sales stores, and we turned our R&D to developments related with speech recognition inside of the room and in natural conditions. By the year of 2018, we've created the speech continuous speech recognition. And it was clear that it's not enough just to recognize speech, but we should understand who said what in order to control clients uh, from the side of the bank. And voice biometrics by the year 2018 was ready to solve this objective. In the year 2019, some of the cases have already implemented speech recognition technology where it was sufficient in order to solve their data objectives for speech analytics. At the same time, we have created protocol track, which is the meeting protocols or court meetings. It works wonderful in courts. It's kind of a greenhouse conditions. Nobody stops anybody and everybody speaks into his own microphone. By the year 2019, the condition was like that. But we understood that we solved these cases, but not everywhere. Then, on a step-by-step -step basis, we started adding new technologies. So we had speech recognition, voice biometrics. We have understood that it will add face biometrics uh, to some uh, meeting protocoling. It will work better in defining who is speaking. Of course, faces have to be connected to some specific phrases. Let's add discovery of those phrases in this space of the room and make the connection to this. By the 2021, we have the following plans. In order to extend our cases, in order to work with more cases in more of the market niches, we're going to add to these basic speech technologies by some additional technologies of machine learning. And they are listed on this slide. You can download this presentation and you'll be able to read it yourself. My presentation is going to be an overview. How did we leave the call center related telephone channel? For example, speech to text. In 2017, when we've just started moving from telephonics into remote microphone, the error of recognition was 80%. And uh, from year to, to year, it was dropping right now in noisy conditions, in bank conditions. If you will make a set from operators' uh, speeches or client manager of the bank, the error will be on the level of 32%. And according to our opinions, enough to solve uh, speech analytics cases. 
Next, speech analytics can be different. Sometimes it's enough to catch something that was said, and sometimes you have to describe it into a dialogue. Who said, what was said, and we should analyze that. This is uh, denial, and this is the reply of the call center's manager. So we should uh, connect. And previous speaker was, uh, they solve it in the previous channel. And our ambition is to solve it inside of the building by the microphone channel. The main challenge and the main idea, okay, let's divide them by voices, but the uh, challenge for the voice biometrics looked different. It works for long duration speeches. For example, in the year 2007, there was a high quality probable error on the level 10.7, but with a duration of 60 seconds. In order to divide into a dialogue a certain conversation, we have to work on short distances so that separate words could be distinguished. And mostly the turn was done for short distances, and you can see it on the slide, between the year 2016-2018, uh, there was a track that worked on 1.5 second speeches. Right now we're moving on in order to improve this period. That's how we improved basic technologies and by the year 2018 they were almost completed. What happens next? We've made speech recognition, voice recognition, which uh, does the idealization. And for example, in the case, if in a, a silent condition, somebody is with an iPad, takes interview from another person, these two technologies can divide the speech into a dialogue format. An interviewer can use this dialogue-based uh, text. But if we go to the front office, in the same room, we might have several managers, plus they have some specific noises in the background. So we have to do something about it. And this is a speech analytics track. And I'm going to show you the next three slides about how we've been solving these challenges. The first slide, simple thing. On the input, we have audio. We've made a text out of it. We have selected the borders of words, which is important. Then the voice biometrics by the uh, thresholds of these words could define these atomic uh, words, uh, which can be appointed to certain parts, and then voice biometrics have been included. At the output, we have dialogue text, who said and what was said and when it was said. This is the case related to interviews. Let's move on. We might have noises and some more complicated acoustic scenes. What should we do in these cases? Okay, let's add in parallel and in the dark color. You can see here spatial identification. From which side of the microphone did he say that? And on this stage, we added at least two microphone systems. After the text was recognized in the time uh, codes of words, we have a spatial identification and spatial diarization rhization. The results are fused, and at the output we have who said, what was said, and when it was said. Because we have two technologies, the quality is improved, and the thresholds of applicability are getting wider. Next step. That's where we are now. Now we understand that natural language processing technology may also help us. And we add the track number three. Upon the results of text, we add NLP and it is being entered into fusion. This is what we are working on right now. This is the proof why we believe in that and what results we have already achieved. These are examples. For example, in the text you hear words, thank you, and then you're welcome. Most likely there was a change of the speaker. Thank you was said by one person, you're welcome by another. But if there was thank you very much, it was said by one person. This is about changes of the speakers. You can define the role in a dialogue if somebody says, please take a seat. It's not a bank visitor, it's a manager. In addition to that, 
This is a working version. We don't know exactly, but there is an assumption that it's going to work. There is a specific places of uh, speaker changes. Or I, I need to only to ask, or I don't care about your explanations. This is a track number three, NLP. This is a real quality with our pilot in a fueling station in order for you to have a perception in a top graph, on a top histogram. Every point is a service se session. It's important where it's located horizontally, it's the error percentage and two graphs on the top, how the technology makes error separately. At the current level of development, it's word-by-word -word identification error and speech recognition, word-by-word -word error. And the green one is a fusing proxy metrics, important for speech analytics. In half of the cases in this uh, fueling station, they solve the objective of speech analytics. OK, let's speak about the parallel track. We have a separate department, 100 plus people. And we have several groups that work on different products, but with similar objectives. For example, my research team works in the interests of speech analytics, and we have the mirror team that works on almost the same technologies, but the interests of making protocols and minions. We exchange our knowledge, so it helps to all of us. Big meeting room, 30 participants, 25 microphones, and uh, voice biometrics cannot solve objectives like that. This is about thresholds of applicability. Many voices, many speakers. More than five voices cannot be discerned by voice biometrics. We have nine cameras as well. But cameras have been added not from the beginning. So this is the first version of the system. Speech to text cannot be installed in the beginning because we have a lot of microphones. It's improbable cal computing capacities should be added. So we should understand where this statement is made from. And then we discover so-called master channel, the microphone, which could be the best one for voice recognition. And that's where the voice biometrics should be launched. In this master channel, we do the voice biometrics after this speech is being recognized. These solutions work in small meeting rooms. In case with 30 plus participants, it's not going to work. But if you have 10 speakers, well, it's good solution for meetings like that. But the challenge was, okay, let's work. Well, speaking about the minutes making, it has to work in all the meeting rooms of the company. Otherwise, it makes no sense. It has to be stored in a single database. So big meeting rooms are also important. These are mostly top management meetings. So let's add additional modality. In addition to multi-channel auditing, we should add multi-cam video, four cameras, nine cams, multi-channel video defines where the faces are located, looks in a database whose faces they are, and makes the spatial map of those face locations. After this, spatial algorithms determine for every statement where it was made, and then spatial connection is made. Then, in parallel, we have the previous track operation with a spatial and sign biometrics, and in parallel, we have track with a spatial map of faces. Then it's being added up and then delivered to the voice recognition technology. It works and it gives us good quality results. However, right now, this is in the research stage right now, and this is how it looks like about the precision, depending from the type of the meeting and depending from the meeting scenario. For example, top gestogram. Everybody sit it down. They are sitting close to the microphone about 50 centimeters from the microphone, which improves the quality of speech recognition. These points horizontally are the percentage and vertically means nothing because it's a histogram.
So every separate point, every point is a separate meeting. In the top schedule, everybody is sitting, and you see the quality is available, and there are areas from 20 to 30 and up to 40 percent. Next one, everybody is standing. In this case, I'll tell you about the blue dots. It's the scenario of the uh, presentation in one space, and everybody is listening. Well, next one, everybody is standing to further away from the microphone, the recognition precision drops. Next one, the person leaves the microphone table and he's far away and he speaks next to the screen or to the whiteboard. It's a challenge and we cannot solve this objective. We're working on it. And the second challenge are the gray dots. Gray dots are discussions with uh, simultaneous speaking by several people. This story, until recently, it was behind the threshold of our science this year our team in the academic challenge 2020 have solved this problem with very big computing capacities and right now this is on the advanced border of the science threshold but then we have to optimize this system to make it possible to use it in production so these gray points we are going to move into the green zone into the lesser error rate by dividing voices in this voice cocktail so this is about minute making next one like in minute making and speech analytics, what are going to be the next steps? The next steps obviously will look in understanding of natural language understanding, NLU. Semantical search, first of all, creating some social analysis, analysis of social networks and knowledge graphs, chatbots over the speech footprint, other clusterization of the conversation, speech analytics, which doesn't have to be tuned, it divides the conversation by types. And summarization of conversation. This is a minute making objective or some interviews for HR. The challenge is that these technologies work regularly on texts which are typed by hands manually. They do have some errors and typos, but in a case when we follow the speech footprint, there are different errors. These errors are, are much higher in the words recognized, in dialogue structure, and challenge. scientific challenge is in the area of adapting existing NLU approaches to work on the speech footprint. So, the final point, look at the uh, Look at 2012. The continuous speech was uh, recognized via the phone. Now we work with the remote microphone as well. And this technology is just available. I mean, you can use it via the club from CRT or buy on premises, buy to use it on premises. Identification and verification, uh, the voice biometrics in 2012 we have we had long latencies. It was either in a phone channel so that we're taking the sample of the voice in the phone and verifying in the phone, or only in the mic channel. In 2020, we can actually work with short phrases, cross-channel application, phone and microphone channel, and since the phrases are short and they're available, we can also use them for voice uh, menus. This is the slide about the products, about cases. In 2012, logging, minute making was just dictating in a headset. You put the headset on and you dictate and your speech is recorded in Office in Microsoft Word. By the way, in CRD it's for free. You can easily download it. Now, logging minute making is used at official events, used in the doctor's offices to create minutes and log protocols. And also, now we see the logging um, 
and Berzin's Berbank and CRT. It's, uh, it's in, in the progress of development. And now we begin solving the initial cases. In 2012, we only began solving call center cases with speech recognition. Now, of course, the volume is much higher. The volume of recognition is much, much bigger. They only need to solve face-to-face -face cases with the certain um, unilateral one meaning phrases, such as, for example, the purchase in a supermarket when they ask you, do you need a bag for your purchase? And you say yes or no. No. We are testing this technology in banks and at the gas stations. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm ready to answer your questions.